हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू दिस वीडियो इन दिस वीडियो आई बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द नॉर्म यूक्लिडियन डिस्टेंस एनर्जी एंड द एंगल बिटवीन द टू सिग्नल वैक्टर्स आई हैव ऑलरेडी टॉक अबाउट वॉट इज द सिग्नल स्पेस रिप्रेजेंटेशन वॉट इज द बेसिस फंक्शन एंड ऑल अदर बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट अबाउट द सिग्नल स्पेस रिप्रेजेंटेशन इन माई प्रीवियस वीडियो आई स्ट्रॉन्गली रेकमेंड यू टू वॉच माई प्रीवियस वीडियो फर्स्ट बिकॉज आई बी यूजिंग द बेसिक टर्मिनोलॉजीज टू डिस्कस द एडवांस कॉन्सेप्ट हेयर सो द फर्स्ट कॉन्सेप्ट दैट आई वॉन्ट टू डिस्कस इज द नॉम so if i talk about the linear algebra the norm denotes the length of the signal vector so if you remember if i have 3i plus 2j plus 5k so this is my any signal vector so if i need to find out its distance so how i used to find out its distance it was equal to 3 square plus 2 square Plus five square under root. So now similarly here I'll be finding out the distance. So what is this distance denoting? This is the distance from the origin of the vector. So similarly norm denotes the distance from the origin. So it will denote the length of the signal vector. So if I have this signal space representation where this is my phi 1t and this is my phi 2t and this is my s1 this is my s2 i have already talked about this diagram in my previous video as well so now here this length gives me norm of s1 and this length give me the norm of s2 so now i need to find out this length so here if i know the vector s1 is given by 1 2 3 4 so now if i need to find out norm of s1 it will be equal to 1 square plus 2 square plus 3 square plus 4 square under root so now this is my s1 norm so if i need to find out s1 what i can do i can take s1 and i can take s1 transpose and i can multiply them so if i have 1 2 3 4 in the form of a vector i can multiply it with 1 2 3 4 so now here this will give me or this i represented as s1 into s1 transpose so this was the representation of norm so this is giving me norm square so here if i multiply these two i'll be getting 1 square plus 2 square plus 3 square plus 4 square which is s1 norm square so it is equal to norm of s1 square so now i can say s1 transpose or si transpose into si gives me norm square so i hope now it is very clear with the help of this example i can take transpose first as well so like i can take the column vector first 1 2 3 4 and now i can multiply it with the same signal vector so now here i have represented it in the si transpose and this is in the form of simple si so i can represent it in the si transpose si as well as si into si transpose so both of these representations are giving me norm square so now i hope it is very clear if i need to find out norm i'll take the symbol i'll represent it in the message in the set form and now i'll be taking the transpose i'll multiply the sig signal vector with the transpose vector and it is giving me the norm square so it is very easy to find out the norm square so the norm square is the square of distance from the origin so now here now you should not get confused it is square of distance from origin now coming to the euclidean distance so here i am finding out the distance from the origin in the euclidean distance i'll be finding out the distance between the two signal vectors so here i have first signal as i and the second signal vector as k so the norm square will be equal to i am taking the j term so j is representing the position so j 
and the projections of the signal vector i and the signal vector k at different positions. So now here I will be taking the summation. So it will give me si minus sk square. So for example, I have taken si to be 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is my first signal vector. This is my second signal vector 1, 2, 3, 4. If I need to find out the Euclidean distance between s1 and s2, so what I will do? I will Euclid, I am denoting the Euclidean distance by ED. So it will be equal to 2 minus 1 square plus 3 minus 2 square plus 4 minus 3 square plus 5 minus 4 square. So it will be equal to under root 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So now here if I square this Euclidean distance I will be having Sij. So this is 2 is SI1, this is SK1. So I am subtracting SI1 with SK1 and I am taking the square. So I hope now it is clear. This formula is clear. So this is SI1. So this is here I will be representing it SI1. This is SI2. This is SI3 and this is SI4. Similarly, here I have SK1. SK2, SK3 and this is SK4. So I will be subtracting SI1 minus SK1 and I will be taking the square and it is equal to the ED Euclidean distance square. So SI minus SK norm square represent the Euclidean distance. Actually Euclidean distance is norm of SI minus SK. SI is the first symbol, SK is the second symbol. So its square is represented by this formula. So now here I have represented it in the signal form. So it is integration from 0 to t signal SI t minus SK t square dt. So if I have the representation in the signal form, I can easily find out the Euclidean distance here as well. So now coming to the energy. So energy of the signal, I have already classified the duration is capital T. So I have already given this formula in my previous video as well. So energy is equal to integration 0 to t SI square t dt. We all know this formula if I have any signal. So this is my signal. I will take its square. I will integrate over 0 to t. This will give me the energy. So now here I am representing si into si. So now here I am taking the two signals. So I have represented it in the terms of basis function. So I have taken here the basis function j and here I have taken the basis function k. So I have represented it in the form of two basis function. So now here you can see sij and sik are the projections. I have already told you this in my previous video. These are the projection on the phi and phi j and phi k. So now here these projections are the numbers. So if I am representing 3i plus 4j. So now 3 and 4 does not depend upon time. So here I can take it outside the integration. So here I have taken summation j is equal to 1 to n. Summation k is equal to 1 to n. S i j s i k. Integration of phi j into phi k t dt. So now here I will be using the orthonormality property of the basis function. So I know i dot j is equal to 0. This is the orthogonal property and I know i dot i is equal to 1. So this is the orthonormality property. So here I know multiplication of phi j into phi k is 1 when j is equal to k. So when I am taking j is equal to k that time it will be 1. So because it is orthonormal basis function. So here it will be 0 when j is not equal to k. I have already given you the example that when I multiply i vector with j unit vector it will be giving me 0. So here if I have j is equal to k only then I will be having 1 as the output. So here I will be replacing j with k. So here I have replaced k with j. 
सो दिस इज द समेशन जे इज इक्वल टू वन टू एन एस आई जे इन टू एस आई जे सो आई हैव रिप्लेस दिस विद अगेन एस आई जे सो हेयर आई हैव एस आई जे स्क्वायर एंड वॉट वॉज दिस इट वॉज इक्वल टू द नॉम ऑफ एस आई आई हैव ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू सो हेयर this summation as i j square represents the norm i have already told you if i take the square of the projections and i'll be adding them so this is the projection i am taking square and i am adding them so here i'll be getting the norm j represents the position so here energy of the signal is the square length of the signal vector so i have related here the energy with the norm so here this is the relation between energy and norm so now here i can see the inner product just depend upon the coefficient so this is the coefficient it does not depend upon the basis function i have already eliminated it so inner product of the signal does not depend upon basis it just depend upon their coefficient so it is just dependent upon the coefficient or the projection so here i have already discussed about euclidean distance i hope now you are clear about euclidean distance energy and norm and the relation of energy with the norm as well so now coming to the angle subtended between two vectors so now if i talk about the dot product so i hope you remember cos theta was equal to i dot j upon or i can take it as a dot b upon distance of a into distance of b so this is my cos of theta in the case of dot product similarly here i'll be finding out the angle so distance i have replaced with the help of norm here i have my signal so this is my signal as i i have taken its transpose i am multiplying it with sk and dividing it with the norm of si and sk so now when my theta is zero what does it mean when this cos theta was zero in the case of dot product what does it mean it means that it is having orthogonal properties similarly when i have the angle subtended between two signal vectors is equal to zero it means these are orthogonal in nature and if i normalize them that will mean that it is orthonormal if i find out the angle between the basis function so if i need to find out the angle between phi i and phi j it will always be zero because i already know these are orthonormal so now here i have represented again it in the signal form so here cos square theta k will be what was cos theta k cos theta k is equal to integration of minus infinity to infinity s i into s k dt upon integration from minus infinity to infinity s i square under root this is the distance so similarly here if i need to find out the distance so here it will be minus infinity to infinity s k square t dt under root so this is the distance of s k so if i need to find out cos square i'll be taking it square i know the value of cos square theta is always less than equal to 1 so this value is always less than equal to 1 so minus infinity to infinity s i into s k square upon so i have cancelled out this root and this root with the square so upon i have integration minus infinity to infinity s i square t dt integration minus infinity to infinity sk square t dt less than equal to 1 so when i take this denominator this side so here i'll be having minus infinity to infinity si t sk t dt square less than equal to minus infinity to infinity si square t sk square t dt so what was that that was cauchy's swart's inequality 
so this is the proof of the cauchy schwartz inequality with the help of the signal vectors as well so i hope now you understood each of the things which i have discussed here these things are very important when you talk about the linear algebra so if you still have any doubt you can put the doubt in the comment i'll try to resolve it as soon as possible i hope you like this video if you like it share it with your friends subscribe the channel and push the like button thank you